Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. Now, if you're making drums in Groove Agent SE5, you may think the best place to make them sound good is the mixer. Whether that's the main mixer, the Groove Agent SE instrument mixer, or even the Catalina wine mixer. It's a fucking Catalina wine mixer. It's a fucking Catalina wine mixer. But I'm here to tell you that if you want great sounding drums in Groove Agent SE5, which comes included with Cubase, you should start with the edit page. And I'm gonna show you how to use it today. Okie dokie folks, we're here with another project in Cubase, uh, Cubase 11 Pro, but this should work with most Cubases because Groove Agent fortunately comes even with elements. We're working with the project with acoustic drums and this tutorial will be for acoustic drums, although you can use some of the principles with some of the other modules within Groove Agent. So let's take a listen to the drums right now in the context of the song, it'll come in a little loud, just be forewarned. Okay, so as you can hear, we're working with the, the acoustic agent specifically, I believe it's the Kit SE. Um, out of all of these, it's not Studio SE, it's the Kit SE, and it's the preset called Isolated. I've made some changes to it. I've actually monkeyed around with it a bunch. And as you can see, the kit mix, or the, uh, the mixer is up. And one thing about the mixer in Cubase and Groove Agent is that sometimes you wanna lower the snare, you turn down the snare, and the snare is still as loud as ever. Let, let's uh, take a look at that right now. It's almost as if the uh, snare mic is doing absolutely nothing. And that's because a lot of the sounds come actually from the edit page, which I'm gonna show you how to use today. Uh, so first of all, let's go to our kit. This is um, where all the main samples are loaded that I've used, uh, page three of the instrument page. And uh, we'll just be working with kick and snare today, just so it's easier. So if you click on the pad, you can see right here it changes to kick and it gives me all of my edit instrument controls. If I do the same with snare, It'll give me all of my edit instrument controls here. So now if we turn down the room and the overhead, we'll be able to hear what that snare mic sounds like in context. Let's go. And um, so that's your first tip. If you want to add uh, an overhead sound or a room sound, these are great uh, options. And you can use these sometimes in place of adding reverb to stuff. Um, where you would add reverb in Groove Agent if you want to do it within the instrument, is you would set up an aux channel up here in the mixer, where you click this tab, aux, and then I have a reverence loaded. So if I wanted um, actual reverb, I could turn these down and we can hear what it sounds like. Um, we'll play through again. Here's my reverence on auxiliary two. So if I go back to the mixer main page and turn up auxiliary two. But if you don't wanna add reverb that way through the aux channel, you can actually just, you know, bleed in some room and overhead and you'll get some room sounds from the room that the kit was recorded in and it'll be sort of consistent across the entire set. So let's listen to that as we bring in room and overhead sounds for the snare. Let's get the uh, snare level down back to where it was about and then start bringing in some room and overhead. And we can solo the snare. So very good ambiance coming in from the room and overhead mics. Okay, and now the next place where the edit page makes a huge difference is in tuning the individual drums. And this makes a huge difference both for kick and snare. Um, let's start with the kick since we have it selected.
And so sometimes what you want is not really a different sample. You can just tune the sample you already have and you may get to a kick sound that you're looking for. And that's a, a very important thing to keep in mind. Now it works with the snare as well. If we select the snare, we can affect the tuning on the snare. That's about where it sounds good to me in the, um, in the overall scheme of things. If we take it off, you can hear it in context. And then finally, what I wanna show you in the edit section is there's a filter here. There's an attack and a decay and a hold. So uh, do we need to know what these mean? I suppose, yeah, it would be very helpful to know what they mean. Hold means the decay will start after the hold is over. So if the hold is 100%, the decay doesn't really do much, but let's listen to the kick drum here. And I'll uh, solo the groove agent again. So you hear it's holding for the whole time that the sample rings out. Now, if I bring the hold down to zero, it'll hold, it'll stop holding and it'll start decaying. So, um, now if I have the decay to a hundred, it'll sound like this. An awful lot like it sounded when the hold was a hundred. But if I have the hold set to zero and the decay set to 20, It'll decay, I believe, in milliseconds. I don't know exactly what the... Uh... So if you want a deader uh, kick sound, and we can listen to that in context, this is much more dead than it was before. Um, you know, you can play with the hold and decay functions. <laughs> Um, and that's a huge benefit. Now, if you want the decay to be that long, but you want it to hold for half first, or hold for 30, you know. So you can do a lot with the sound of the uh, liveness or deadness of a kick drum or a snare drum. We can try it with the snare too. Let's uh, start monkeying around with that a bit. And so you can get a very short snare sound. Now we can also look at attack times. Um, we can just solo the snare real quick and you'll see how an attack time um, basically cuts off the beginning or has a swell from the beginning. So here's a no attack. Here's attack at half. So that can really affect the uh, transient of the snare or a kick. You know, that's a, that's a no attack, and here's a long attack. And so you can hear that it, uh, it really cuts out a lot of the bite up front if you uh, add, add attack. And uh, using these filters, they will affect the samples that you're using, and they'll have a more profound effect over mixing a Groove Agent acoustic kit than even the Groove Agent mixer or your main mixer will in Cubase. So this has just been a few quick lessons on how to use the edit page in Groove Agent SE to affect your acoustic drum samples. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please feel free to like or subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.